Uh, bonjour tout le monde. Good morning, everyone. My name is Miriam Boudreau, and I am a director on the Ottawa branch of the National Association of Federal Retirees. I would like to begin by acknowledging that the land on which the branch office is located is traditional unceded territory of the Algonquin Anishinaabe people. On behalf of the branch, I'm pleased to welcome you to today's webinar titled Healthy Feet, The Freedom to Move, presented by Sarah Dormani. Sarah is a registered nurse specialized in foot care and the co-founder and clinical director of the Natural Soul Wellness Center on Carling Avenue. Sarah worked as a critical care nurse in emergency for over six years and went on to complete her postgraduate studies with honors in advancing nursing foot care. She loves teaching and does this through the Ontario uh, Podorto Nursing Association, when, where she also serves as a vice president. Sarab focuses on patient empowerment and advocacy, healthy aging strategies, preventing care, and patient well being using a holistic approach. Veuillez noter que le webinaire sera présenté en anglais, mais la, votre participation bilingue est toujours encouragée. I want to give a special welcome to anybody here who is not yet a member of the association. We hope these webinars will inspire you to join us and to our members. We hope that these webinars encourage you to maintain your membership with us. I also want to tell you, our members about our uh, annual mega recruitment drive. So from now until the end of the year, December 31st, every time you successfully recruit a new member, you will receive a ballot to win one of our 14 great prizes, including a $10,000 cash grand prize courtesy of Johnson Insurance. All members who successfully recruit a new member will also receive a $5 Tim Horton gift card. There's no limits to the number of times you can uh, be entered into the grand prize draw. So the more new members you recruit, the more chances you will have to win. After today's webinar, uh, the Ottawa branch will send you an email with instructions on how to access the recording of today's webinar, more information on the mega recruitment drive and how to join the association or give a gift of membership. Remember too that you can always invite no members, non-members to register for our webinars as guests and try us out for free. There will be a question and answers uh, period at the end of the webinar. So please type your questions in the chat box throughout the session and Sarah will answer them during the question and answer period. So without delay, I will, I'm going to turn the presentation over to Sarah. Thank you. All right, thank you, Miriam. Um, so I'm just gonna pull up my presentation here. Great. Right. Set this up here. All right, oh, sorry. Okay, so good morning, everyone. Bonjour tout le monde. Um, thank you for taking the time this morning um, to join me today as we talk about the importance of healthy feet and the freedom to move. In our presentation today, we are going to talk about the importance of promoting healthy feet, common foot conditions, and their causes, preventive care strategy, and when you should see a foot care specialist. So just a quick disclaimer, this presentation is attended for educational purposes only and as an overview of some of the foot health related topics. It is uh, not intended to replace medical advice and the information that I'm sharing with you today are of my own knowledge, experience, education, research and skills. So if you need any advice about a specific medical concern, uh, please speak to your primary healthcare provider or to your medical foot care specialist. So just quickly, um, my background, just to put it in perspective, I've been a registered nurse for 10 years and I do have an extensive background in critical care um, in the emergency department. But in my daily practice, I'm always asked, well, why did I choose feet? Why did I specialize in foot care? A few years ago, I sustained um, a leg injury that impacted me significantly uh, to the point that I was unable to work, unable to remain active and unable to take care of my kids properly. And at that moment, I realized how much your feet are important to your quality of life and to your wellness. But I also found out at the same time that as a nurse, I 
have the opportunity of advancing my practice in foot care and specializing in foot care uh, certifications um, that are for nurses to have their own independent practice and in providing foot care in the community. Um, with that, I didn't think twice. I, I went for it and I fell in love with um, anything that was really related about foot health because I think I found out the hard way um, that when you don't have, um, you know, strong feet to stand on and can really, really impact you quite drastically. So with that being said, I co-founded Natural Soul Wellness Center, which is our clinic um, back in 2020. Um, we just celebrated our two year anniversary not long ago. We are a multidisciplinary wellness center here in Ottawa and provide a holistic approach to health. So I do offer foot care, but I work with a team of other wellness practitioners and we all work together. So I always get asked, well, as a nurse, what do you offer, what do you do? So just quickly, um, I offer nursing consultations, assessments and plan of care. I offer advanced medical foot care and advanced medical foot care is for everyone. Um, I would say our most popular uh, service at the clinic are medical pedicures. So people coming in um, needing help with toenail trimmings, foot care. Uh, we can help with thick, damaged, painful toenails. We can help with corns, calluses, cracked heels, provide skin care for the feet. Um, we also provide diabetic foot care and foot screening. We do also provide a non-surgical and non-invasive approach to uh, ingrown toenail care. We provide treatments for fungal toenails. We uh, provide care for bunions, hammer toes, arthritic feet, um, conditions uh, caused by the aging foot. I also myself am certified um, in compression therapy garments, so I can see patients with vascular conditions or lymphedema and dispense compression garments according to their condition. Um, we also carry foot products and uh, footwear. So we do provide footwear assessments to make sure that you are wearing the proper footwear for your feet. And being a nurse and having um, experience in wound care, I do also offer wound care assessments, um, wound assessments and care. And as I mentioned, I do work with a team. So we do offer um, services, treatments related to pain management, custom orthotics and gait scan assessments. So just here uh, on the top is a picture of me working and at the bottom is a picture of my, uh, my treatment group. So just a few uh, fun foot facts. I could do a whole presentation on foot facts, but I chose my favorite ones. So 25% of our body's bones are in our feet. So that's a total of 52 bones just in our feet alone. Um, the foot is a very complex structure. There's hundreds of nerve endings, ligaments and tendons, and each foot um, has about 7,000 nerve endings. So this is why our feet are ticklish. Women are four times more likely to develop foot problems compared to men. And it's often because we choose style over comfort in our um, footwear fashion. So it does contribute to more uh, foot pain or injuries related to that. Unfortunately, 75% of Canadians will experience foot problems in their lifetime. Just because it's so common, it does not mean it's normal. Foot pain, any pain is not normal and needs to be addressed. And um, the average person walks about 160,000 kilometers in a lifetime, which is approximately four times around the earth. So our feet do go through a lot. So with all this being said, well, why is foot health important? Well, your feet are your body's foundation and because of their role in complex structure, foot health and foot care is essential. I've learned the hard way with my injury um, that I, my quality of life was affected. I wasn't able to work, I wasn't able to drive, so I've lost my independency. Um, my strength had diminished, my mobility was affected. I needed to use crutches to walk around. My posture and my balance were affected because I was often compensating on my other leg uh, to find strength, but it was definitely causing a lot of problems. So I started having back pain with that. Um, with that all being said, foot problems can impact us quite significantly, physically, socially, mentally. And our senior populations, we've noticed that foot problems can increase the risk of falls, which is quite uh, drastic. And our high risk patients, we do notice that um, foot complications can increase the risk of having wounds or infections. Um, which can impact their lives quite significantly. And there is a financial impact related to that. If you aren't able to walk and get around, then you're not able to go to work. There will be a loss of revenue related to that. 
if you have an infection or a wound that needs to heal, there is going to be the cost of medical supplies and medical devices to help heal that. There is going to be the cost of medications such as antibiotics um, and so on and pain management medication too, to help heal that. So there are financial impacts with, um, with foot concerns. So if foot health is so important, why is it forgotten? I feel like the human body is not designed to think or care about its feet. Um, they're far from our heart. So they're naturally poor to, um, so they're naturally exposed to poor circulation. Uh, they're far from our eyes um, and they're also far from our hands. So they're out of reach. And um, when our feet do get neglected, um, a small problem can definitely bring bigger uh, concerns. Um, so foot health is important because I always say, if you got to get your eyes and your teeth checked, why not your feet routinely? Uh, they're really, really a big deal. So this brings us to some of the most common foot conditions that I've seen throughout my practice that I wanted to share with you. So first off, we'll talk a bit about skin conditions. Um, we often hear about calluses and corns and people come to the clinic. They're like, is it a callus? Is it a corn? What's going on? Um, either or calluses and corns are thick layers of skin that are developing because there's an area of the foot that is being exposed to stress, friction, pressure, rubbing. Um, and so the brain is sending a signal to the body saying, oh, there's stress there. We have to produce more skin to protect ourselves. Um, it's a really, really great response, but it can lead to painful corns and calluses, unfortunately. There are different causes um, to either corns and calluses, and it's important to determine the cause to be able to provide the, um, the treatment plan doesn't really, really change, but if we can also eliminate what's causing them, it is going to help with our treatment plan. Um, what concerns us with calluses is often when they get quite thick, they can start bleeding um, because they're getting cracked and then those cracks can, uh, can bleed. And we often see that in cracked heels. Um, the skin is affected all the way to the dermis. So the skin barrier being open can actually also increase the risk of infection. So it's really important to have um, a good approach with that in terms of um, in clinic, what we do is we reduce the callus and I integrate a wound care approach to help close the skin up and um, to promote healing. Uh, what we see with calluses is that tight shoes can contribute, but so can oversized shoes. Um, because if your shoe is too big, your foot is always going to slide and there is going to be friction um, and that can cause the callus from, from appearing. With corns, uh, they're typically smaller than calluses. There are usually a lot of um, high concentration of, of skin debris that's packed it in one area. It can be on a bone, it can be between toes, on the joints. Um, but what I notice is often people are mistaking it for a plantar sport. It is not an infection, so it's not a wart. It's really, really dead skin. What can cause that is tight footwear or um, tight footwear on a bone where the corn can appear. Um, with that being said, treatments that we do offer is making sure that you have the right footwear, um, that you have um, a good moisturizer at home to hydrate and nourish the skin. And we can also provide cushioning and offloading in those areas until um, the corn or the callus heals better. And then we follow up with those appointments. Toenail conditions, what I commonly see in my practice are fungal toenails and ingrown toenails. With fungus, it is an infection. And even though fungal toenail infections are quite common, uh, it should not be ignored. The nail is infected by a fungus that is starting to change uh, the structure of the toenail. And the toenail can become yellow, crumble, thick. Um, there could be odors related to that. And it does take some time to heal because the toenail takes time to grow. Um, a toenail can take anywhere between a year to a year and a half to grow. So that's why if, if someone injures their toenails and they're like, it's not getting better, it's just because the toenail naturally takes longer to grow than our fingernails. And it's mainly because they're far from the heart. So they're just prone to not great circulation compared to our hands. Um, with that being said, it's really, really important to be consistent with, uh, with fungal toenail treatments. Um, because what happens is that if you are not consistent, every time the new nail grows, the fungus keeps on reinfecting the nail. 
And fungus thrives in dark and moist environments, and that's what your feet are subject to most of the day. So it's important to find ways to break that cycle and uh, to see what treatment we offer or your medical foot care specialist offers to help with that. Um, it's important to know the different causes of fungal toenails because you can definitely prevent this from happening. Public showers and saunas, I mean, there's, there's water on the ground. That's uh, areas where the fungus can, can live in. Um, so that's a huge risk factor. If you have a nail injury and then the fungus integrates itself into the toenail, that can be, um, that can be another way that, the, uh, that you got the fungal infection. Um, but the one thing I see the most in my practice is people coming in and being like, I quote, I had a bad pedicure. I had an unsafe pedicure at a nail spa. Um, that did not sterilize their tools properly, that did not clean their or disinfect their areas properly. Um, so if you are soaking your feet and the foot bath where someone with fungus had their foot soaked there, you will get, unfortunately, a fungal infection. The other thing that people don't notice that I always remind them is when you go to a foot spa, you see a nice wall of multicolored nail polishes. It looks great. But if the person before you had toenail fungus and chose the same color that you are going to be choosing, and that nail polish is being applied to your toenails, I don't like to use this word, but the word is, I call it double dipping. So if you are going to go to an aesthetic spa because you want to have nice colored toenails, it's fine. But I do recommend bringing your own nail polish. It will reduce the risk of you getting um, a fungal infection. It's just not worth it. A fungus is very stubborn to treat. We can treat it, but it does require a lot of commitment. With ingrown toenails, um, as you can see on the picture at the bottom there, where the area of the nail is curving into the skin, there are different um, kinds of ingrown toenails that curve into the skin or that grow into the skin. Either way, they're very painful. They can cause swelling and tenderness. And if the skin gets broken with the sharpness of the nail and bacteria gets in there, it can get infected. And, and when there is an infection, you do need antibiotics. Uh, causes of ingrown toenails can be toenails that are trimmed too short, they're tight shoes that are pressing onto the toenail, an injury. Um, either way, when you do have an ingrown toenail, please do not get a do-it-yourself kit off of Amazon. Please do not go on YouTube to try to fix it on your own. I don't recommend that. I they come and see me afterwards because things didn't go well. So um, get that professionally seen right away. Don't attempt anything uh, yourself. Um, the results are great. And uh, it's important to have that professionally taken care of. Not all ingrown toenails need surgery. So it's important to have an open and transparent uh, conversation with your provider, with your foot care specialist, to see what the options are because we do have non-invasive options to treat ingrown toenails. Um, but nonetheless, I can't stress enough, do not attempt any bathroom surgeries. So we're gonna talk about a bit too about foot conditions. Um, what we commonly see are bunions and hammer toes. Bunions are more of that bony bump at the big toe joint, and there is sort of more less pronounced deviation of that uh, toe joint and where the toe can kind of be the bone, sorry, can be sort of sticking out. And that can cause some redness, some pain, and some swelling. Causes can be related to flat feet, genetics, tight footwear. Um, so if the toe box of the shoe is too tight, think of like pointy high heels, um, you know, it squeezes all of the toes in there uh, that can cause the bunion from happening. Hammer toes, on the other hand, um, um, the picture at the bottom, you can see where the toe is sort of uh, bent at the joint. There is a weakness of either the ligaments or the tendons in the second, third, or fourth toe that it's causing the toe to bend. That can happen from poorly fitted footwear. So either, again, small shoes that are kind of compressing all your toes back or oversized shoe, because as humans, we have a natural tendency of gripping our toes if we feel unstable. So if you are wearing shoes that are too big, you're always gonna have that tendency of gripping your toes at the bottom of your shoe without noticing because um, it's just, it's a reflex, it's a mechanism to protect yourself. 
So that can overuse those soft tissues and cause the hammer toes um, from happening. Um, other causes can also be injuries, high arches and bunions. But nonetheless, treatments are pretty similar for both. We do, um, surgeries are not as commonly done anymore as they were maybe 30, 40 years ago on these foot conditions. Um, the recovery for these surgeries um, were very lengthy. Uh, it was very, very hard to recover. And um, the outcomes weren't always the best because results weren't guaranteed. So we've had people that had bunion surgery and then the bunion ended up coming back or that the toes reshifted after the bunion surgery. Um, with that being said, when we were looking at non-conservative, um, sorry, more of a conservative approach, we do stress a lot about making sure that you have a properly fitted footwear with a wide toe box. So making sure that your shoe is wide enough so that the feet, uh, the toes don't feel too compressed. Um, digital spacers, as you can see on the little pictures there, there's silicone spacers between the toes. Um, those can also help sort of separate the toes from each other and prevent the toes from, uh, from rubbing on each other. And um, yeah, so these are non-invasive uh, non approaches to treating the bunions. We can't really change the bone structure, but we can definitely work on making sure, sorry, making sure that the, uh, the toes don't feel too, too stiff. Um, I wanted to just include a slide also on leg health and as well as leg circulation because I am certified in, uh, in compression garment therapy. And uh, I always notice that conditions such as swollen legs are not given much importance to. And it's unfortunate because if you do have um, leg swelling, such known as edema, it can definitely indicate an underlying condition and it does need to be addressed. And this is something that we can work with your family doctor um, to help with uh, finding the proper diagnosis and also finding the proper treatment plan to help with that. Um, in conditions such as peripheral vascular disease, which is either the veins or the um, arteries of the legs that are affected, it's important to have a proper diagnosis to prevent conditions such as blockages of the arteries in the leg or blood clots. There are risk factors we can't work on, such as age and family history, but there are other risk factors that we can work on, such as lifestyle habits, um, getting you more active, helping you quit smoking, and so on. Um, and we can definitely find ways to prevent from the varicose veins and the spider veins from getting worse in the legs. One of the treatments that we recommend for conditions that affect the veins, not the arteries, but the veins, are um, compression socks. And uh, compression socks help with bringing that blood flow back to the heart because you have to think of the blood um, from the legs going back to the heart has a long way to go. So compression socks help with that. But again, the diagnosis is important because if you do have a blocked artery, the last thing you want to do is to block, um, compress a blocked artery. And that can be quite life-threatening. And this is one of the reasons why at our clinic, we don't sell compression socks off the shelf, that we only dispense them with an assessment and a proper evaluation, working with your family doctor to get a proper diagnosis. Um, the other condition that I also see that I feel like is very underdiagnosed in, which is unfortunate, is lymphedema, because there are a lot of different treatments to help with lymphedema. So what happens with lymphedema is that there's a normal fluid buildup in one of the limbs. Um, and there has been damage to the lymph node, either from surgery, cancer, or radiation. And then uh, that lymph fluid is not properly drained out of the limb, and it can definitely affect the function of the limb. So you have to think of if you have one leg that is significantly larger than the other one, it's hard to get, you know, um, the shoes that will fit properly, clothing, anything like that, and can really affect your quality of life. So proper compression bandaging, proper compression socks, manual lymphatic drainage, these are all uh, therapies that are out there that can help with uh, leg circulation as well. And the one condition I really, um, I mean, I can't talk about foot health without talking about diabetes. Um, this is something we commonly see in our practice and diabetes is really the ongoing pandemic here. And with its increase, we are seeing an increase of foot complications. So with everything a diabetic person has to manage, it, uh, foot health can be often forgotten. And poor blood circulation 
and nerve damage known as neuropathy are often what we see from uh, diabetes that can lead to um, foot complications. So what happens is that if your blood sugar levels are not well managed, and by blood sugar, I don't just mean your A1C levels, I mean your blood glucose levels. If there are highs and peaks and we don't know about it, you have to think of honey in your blood vessels, and that's what is affecting um, your circulation and can be damaging the, uh, the nerves and the veins. And what I've seen is diabetics um, with nerve damage, they have no sensation at the bottom of their feet. If they step on an object, they don't know about it. I've unfortunately had to pull out rocks, pebbles, glass from people's feet. It is quite drastic. They had no feeling. They had no idea. They, they had stepped on these objects. It had created sores and ulcers. Um, and when you do have an open wound on a diabetic foot, it can take time to heal because there is poor blood circulation. The longer that sore and that ulcer is open, the higher risk of an infection. And if the infection is hard to treat, that's often why um, there could be the risk of amputating the limb. Um, unfortunately, a leg amputation or foot amputation from a diabetic foot can happen quite quickly as well, depending on how um, drastically the infection spreads and how hard it is to treat. Um, and a lot of the times this can be prevented. It's really, really important to integrate a medical foot care specialist in your healthcare team. And I'm putting the emphasis on the word of a medical foot care specialist, going to get a pedicure at the spa. Those are not medical foot care specialists. You need someone that will be able to provide you proper diabetic foot screening, proper diabetic foot assessments. Um, if there are risk factors, we need to identify what the risk factors are in terms of preventing. I've had people coming in because they had a new pair of shoe and created an ulcer on top of the foot. It was already infected. Managed to pick up on that, get that treated right away and prevent a series of complication. And there is a lot you can also do at home, which we'll shortly talk about in terms of preventing foot complications and just keeping your feet healthy. So um, we've powered through uh, probably the fastest five slides that I've had to talk about foot health. Um, but um, your wellness starts with your feet. And here are a few things you can do at home in keeping your feet healthy. So we recommend inspecting your feet daily and often, daily, especially if you are diabetic or have other risk factors. So you're just looking for cuts, blisters, sores, calluses, corns, anything that's abnormal. Obviously, if you see anything that's abnormal, it needs to be addressed right away to your foot care specialist. Foot hygiene is as important as brushing your teeth. So we do recommend cleaning your feet daily and making sure you dry well between your toes. Moisturize your feet with a urea-based cream. Urea is what's going to really lock in the moisture into your feet. Um, products such as Vaseline and coconut oil, molecules are too big. They don't really penetrate into the skin and don't really provide that hydration that your feet need. Properly fitted footwear, as we mentioned um, throughout the slides, having the right shoes indoors and outdoors are very, very important as well. And we do recommend seeing your foot care specialists routinely or um, definitely um, in case of an emergency as well. Don't wait for that. So the don'ts. Well, don't walk barefoot, especially outdoors, um, but also indoors. Um, if you broke glass and you can't, you have no sensation at the bottom of the feet, you don't want to step on glass and not know about it. Um, in public areas such as gyms, spas, and saunas, um, don't walk barefoot. That's where people pick up fungal infections, planters wart. Don't wear tight socks and shoes because tight shoes can cause injuries um, to your feet and tight socks can uh, impair with blood circulation. And uh, don't share your foot care tools, just like you wouldn't share your razor and your toothbrush. Same goes with your foot care tools. They should be your own. Uh, we don't recommend applying lotion between your toes because any increased moisture between the toes can increase the risk of fungal infections, such as athlete's foot. And in cases of corns, calluses, and ingrown toenails, do not try to attempt removing them on your own. Unfortunately, this can lead to injuries and infections. So this brings us to um, when you should see a foot care specialist. Well, we recommend 
seeing a foot care specialist, if you just simply need help with your foot care, it's getting too difficult for you to trim your toenails. They're um, out of reach. They're too thick to trim. Uh, you can't see what you're doing. And um, I've had people trying to trim their toenails and unfortunately they cut themselves. So they come in with sores and cuts on their toes. It's not worth it. Just have it uh, professionally taken care of. As mentioned, toenail fungus, it's an infection. It needs to be addressed medically and grown toenails. Um, that's another condition that should be taken care of professionally. Um, diabetes, leg, foot, and ankle pain. Anytime that there's pain, it um, pain is not normal. It, as mentioned, it's not part of the normal aging process. It needs to be addressed um, with your either foot care specialist or primary health care provider and see what is the best treatment plan to help you with that. Painful corns and calluses as well need to be addressed, um, especially if there's pain. We, uh, we have different techniques to reduce the uh, and debride the calluses and corns properly and really remove the pressure from that area of the foot so you can walk and uh, get back to your daily activities comfortably. Cracked heels, because we uh, want to make sure that the crack is not deep enough that the, um, the underlying skins are affected, such as the dermis. If there is, then we shouldn't be integrating a wound care approach to it. And just routine checkup, wellness check, uh, preventive care is another reason why you can see your foot care specialist. You just want to drop in and just make sure everything's fine, get a few tips and tricks on how you can care uh, for your feet at home. Um, like I said, you see your dental hygienist for just the routine cleanup and checkup. Uh, you know how to take care of your teeth at home, but once every few months, it's good to see um, a professional to making sure everything is fine. So this brings me um, to the end of my presentation, and I just wanted to share with you a picture of me and my family and uh, our jumping feet. And I also wanted to share with you one of my favorite quotes from Leonardo da Vinci, who says, the human foot is a masterpiece of engineering and a work of art. So I wanted to thank you all uh, today um, for listening to my presentation. It's been a wonderful opportunity to be invited by the association to raise awareness, um, not only about foot health, um, but about our general wellness and for also giving me the opportunity to share my passion with you all. Um, J'aimerais me remercier l'association pour cette belle opportunité d'avoir été invité pour cette présentation aujourd'hui pour uh, parler sur la santé, l'importance des soins de pied et pour que je puisse aussi partager ma passion avec vous. And um, I'll be taking some questions now. Oui, merci beaucoup, uh, Sarah. Uh, so I will go through uh, the questions that our members have uh, uh, posted. So the first one, how are you different from a podiat podiatrist? Hopefully I, I, I'm saying this properly. Or a chiropodist? A chiropodist, yeah. Um, so we, we both specialize in feet. Um, they do other um, procedures, like if you would need more of a surgery or things like that, then we would refer out if you do need more of a surgical uh, procedure for like, let's say, um, removing ingrown toenails. But um, essentially, I can just speak for myself, being a registered nurse and specializing in foot care. I've graduated from nursing first, so I've learned about the human body from life to death and then specialize in foot care. So when I do see a patient at my clinic, I don't just talk about feet because I know that the feet are connected to the human body. If I have a diabetic person coming in, we don't just talk about the diabetic foot. We talk about blood sugar management, nutrition, um, lifestyles, uh, you know, wound care, offloading, all of these approaches because that comes from my nursing background. That is my experience of um, having to learn about the, uh, the person entirely and to be able to offer more of that whole person um, centered approach to care. Um, but essentially uh, it's the choices for the patient to see what, what approach works best for them. It's just kind of like if you have back pain, do you go see her? A chiropractor, a physiotherapist, a massage therapist, an acupuncturist, essentially they're all going to help you with removing the pain, um, but the choice is yours to see what approach works best for you. Thank you. Um, next one, does one require a referral from the medical doctors for orthotics or other services provided by you? And to what extent are the service covered by whole hip or insurance plans? Yes, so that is definitely a very frequent question we get. 
Um, unfortunately, OHIP does not provide coverage for foot care services. Um, some insurance plans do cover foot care, either in my case, it would be whatever coverage you have for nursing care, um, or um, some insurance companies have healthcare spending accounts. So whatever your insurance doesn't cover, you have an amount per year for healthcare spending accounts and you can spend on that or in paramedical services as well. So some people kind of get like a lump sum of like, let's say a thousand dollars a year. So it's their choice if they want to spend like 400 on foot care and then 200 on massage, they choose their amount. Um, essentially, we do provide you with a, uh, an invoice with all of the information for you to submit for your coverage or for your income taxes, because it is a medical service that you can claim on your income taxes. Um, some insurance companies will ask for a prescription from your doctor, especially for medical devices such as orthotics and compression therapy, because they do want a diagnosis for that. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, next one, should you cut toenails straight across or curved? Yes, great question. So we do recommend trimming the toenails uh, straight across, because if you cut them too curved, uh, that's often the risk of having them growing into the skin and causing an ingrown toenail. Um, we can talk about the proper technique of, uh, of trimming toenails because the tools that you are going to use is going to be important. The typical toenail clippers that we buy are often one size fits all, and we're all sort of forcing that toenail to go in there and trim it all in one um, one snip and it's not, uh, it's not the right way to do it. Um, so the tools that you're going to be choosing are very important. Uh, we recommend nippers so you can have um, that flexibility of cutting the toenail trim across and a good toenail file so you can slightly file the, um, the edges so they're not too sharp and they don't get cut up in your socks. Okay, thank you very much. Someone's asking examples of urea-based creams that are available. Is this something you can get in a dr regular drugstore? Um, yeah. Um, so there are different products available. We carry products that are specifically sold to um, medical foot care clinics um, that aren't sold at the pharmacy. But the important thing is if you have, uh, you have to read the ingredients and often on the first, at the front of the bottle, it will be written the percentage of, uh, of urea that is in the product. Approximately what I would recommend is more the 10, 10 to 15%. I do personally find that going into the 25% and higher can, uh, can be sometimes irritating for the skin. So you have to be careful with that. Okay, thank you. Um, I've got here, any issues regarding the soles? Um, okay, the soles of the feet. I don't know, maybe you'll understand. The loss of padding, etc. Any issues regarding, okay, so I'm assuming that uh, I, I don't know if you can read through this. Any issues regarding the soles of the feet? Loss of issues? padding, etc. Yeah. Is it issues or shoes? Any issues regarding oh, the soles? I don't, yeah. Yeah, I mean, we. Again, that, that is a very, very specific, um, mm. more of a medical question because there can be a lot of different issues and concerns. When you do lose padding in, at the bottom of your feet, is it because you have the ball of your foot is dropped down and the bones are pressing and you don't have enough muscle pad or uh, fat pad to protect the foot? Um, and then you can develop a corn, you can develop a callus, an ulcer. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a very, very specific question. And it's something that would need more of a, an assessment and that we can really, really feel the bottom of the foot to see what's going on. But yes, unfortunately, there can be issues okay. Um, okay. rising. Okay. Okay. Uh, so you told, you told us earlier, better not to put cream in between toes, but someone's asking, can you rub urea-based cream between the toes? or that would apply to that kind of cream as well? I mean, you have to do it very, very lightly. The important thing is we don't want any excess moisture between the toes. So it's the excess moisture between the toes that can be from creams um, that can lead to conditions such as athlete's foot and then that's an infection. And then the, the skin between the toes starts, starts to peel and become macerated. Okay. 
Okay, so uh, I've got someone here who's saying their spouse has uh, type 1 diabetic under good control. Um, I've been, she's been, uh, the person has been fil filing off dry skin on the heel and other spots when needed. Is there somewhere he would be able to get diabetic foot care covered under whole hip in case, um, you know, in case she, she's missing anything in the way she's doing the um, for OHIP, anything that would have to be with OHIP coverage will probably need a referral from your family doctor Okay. and see if you do qualify for any OHIP covered programs. Those are very, very specific uh, programs and they do have sort of a lengthy checklist of if you do qualify for that. Mm. In my experience, they usually see um, patients who uh, sort of have higher risks of developing a concern related to um, mm -hmm diabetic foot. So it's definitely a, a conversation to have with um, either your family doctor or your diabetic doctor. Okay. Uh, so I've got quest some questions here. Might, you, you, you might, uh, they might be more specific examples. So I'll, I'll, I'll leave it to you to see whether you can comment on it or not. Yeah. Um, so what might it mean in your view that toes are becoming numb and the, scale, the skin feels like paper when toes are uh, wiggled? There's no diabetes. Um, again, so that is, a, that is another very, very specific question because we would have to do some neurovascular assessments and uh, seeing if there is any loss of sensation uh, with the numbness that, you know, conditions such as neuropathy is not just exclusive to diabetes. We see it with clients um, who've had chemotherapy, who've had mm -hmm. strokes who've had knee surgeries and hip surgeries because mm -hmm. the, um, the nerve endings are, are damaged during surgery. So it can lead to, to conditions like that. So it's something that would just need a bit more assessment and investigation. Okay. So it's hard okay. to just give a general answer. Okay. Okay. So uh, next one probably will fall in the same category. Again, I'll let you uh, respond to that. So I've had, I have had a sore spot on the outside area of my right foot at the base of my smallest toe. It feels like I'm walking with a raw bone rubbing on the floor if I walk barefoot. I have mm -hmm. to uh, cushion it constantly, but if I do, there's no pain. What kind of foot specialist could offer me more insight into possible treatments? Cairo has no more ideas. Um, Cairo as in the chiropractor or the chiropractor? I have no more information than okay. that and that. All yeah, right. Sorry. Um, so yeah. this is definitely something that we can look into specifically um, mm -hmm. with a foot care specialist to see it, is it caused because of the way the foot is shaped? Um, is it something mm -hmm. that we can recommend a custom orthotic to offload and sort of help realign the foot? Definitely cushioning and padding is what's going to help, but um, it's, it's mm -hmm. something that we'll need a proper assessment to see what, what's causing and what is the deviation at. And also if there's a stool or an ulcer in that area. But yes, it can be definitely quite painful. Um, so can you do referrals to neurologists if there's a, a loss of feelings following a break of a meta, metatarsals three years ago? Um, so being a registered nurse, I unfortunately cannot refer to uh, a physician. I can refer to other uh, specialists as well, but anything that falls into what is covered under OHIP and specialists, even a, anything that has to require a specialist referral has to come from your family doctor. Mm -hmm. So your family doctor, I, I know it's, it's just how our system is made, unfortunately, but it always has mm -hmm. to go back to your family doctor referring to a specialist. I don't even think a specialist can refer to a specialist. Like it always comes back to your okay. family doctor. Okay, uh, I think there's a follow-up question to the, uh, the, the, the padding here. Someone's asking, why would padding on their feet be getting thinner? How would that oh, happen? As, um, this is something that can happen as part of the aging foot. As we age, unfortunately, we do go through a natural loss of muscle mass and um, fatty tissue. So mm -hmm. the feet kind of follow along with this. Okay. Um, someone is asking if you do the neurovascular testing in-house. I, at the moment, do not offer any home care services. These are all services that are offered in clinic. We just have a better 
set up for that. Um, mm -hmm. If ever um, you want us to refer you out to mm -hmm. people that do offer this home care, I mm -hmm. would just have to see who exactly offers this in home. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, is there any treatment to feed neuropathy? Um, neuropathy, we're, we're still trying to understand neuropathy. It is quite mm -hmm. complex and there are different mm -hmm. kinds of neuropathy as well. Um, there's a lot of gizmos and gadgets out there that say that can cure neuropathy. I and my practice have not yet seen someone saying, oh, I've tried this and it cured my neuropathy. It is, it can lead to nerve damage and that is often irreversible, but we can still provide alternative treatments to help with the, um, with the pain associated to neuropathy. So often people have burning and inflammation and discomfort. Those we can offer alternative therapies, but to say that we cured their neuropathy, I have not seen that happen. Yeah. And that's um, just a very honest answer. Yeah, thank you. So that's the, that's the, the end of the questions I have in the box. Now I'm going to ask you one, okay, because <laughs> Now, you know, the uncomfortable shoes, I'm guilty on all fronts. You know, I've suffered. And even sometimes I bought shoes that from the outside looked like they were the right thing, low heel, and they ended up hurting me. So how do you choose your, your, your shoes going mm -hmm. forward, knowing that it's got so much impact on your well-being? Absolutely. How do you do that? How do you do that? Um and, and don't worry, Miriam, I'm also guilty of having a gorgeous shoe closet, but I, I do wear it with, uh, with moderation. So mm. um, that, that's one thing. I mean, it, it's nice to wear a, a nice uh, fancy shoe that is going to match her dress at an, at an evening, but it shouldn't be your everyday go-to shoes either. I feel like that we often fit our feet to the shoe and not the shoe to our mm. foot. So that, that a lot, um, with that in mind, it's important to make sure that the shoe that you are choosing is fitting your foot shape and not the other way around. There are um, different, thing, different things you can look into when you are looking for a shoe is you have to make sure that you have a shoe that will accommodate the width of your foot, not just the size, um, but also the toe box, that there's enough room for you to wiggle uh, your toes and move your your uh, your toes around into the shoe um, that you have good cushioning and support inside the shoe as well so good arch support um, and the sort of uh, saying that says like oh I have to break into my shoe I'll give myself the week to break into my shoe it's not true if you are trying a pair of shoe and it's already hurting you right off the bat it is not the shoe that is made for your foot but that the, the pain is not going to get any better the other quick recommendation that I make when you are shopping for shoes is try them in the afternoon because our feet do naturally swell up at the, throughout the day. So at the end of the day, your feet are going to be a bit larger and that's when you want the shoe to fit you the best. Thank you so much. Uh, I think that we went through all the questions. Thank you for giving us your um, emails and, and coordinates on your slide and that's going to be available. So. Uh, I want to really thank everybody to participate in today's webinar and the Ottawa branch, uh, Sarah, is, is, would like to really thank you as a speaker for your wonderful presentation. Thank you um, so much. I want, uh, that was great. I want to remind um, uh, all our members that to watch for our follow-up email, which will include uh, information on, on how to access the recording of today's webinar and uh, information about Sarab and how to contact her. Uh, we do hope that uh, you will decide to participate in our mega recruitment drive and refer new members. Uh, your branch really need your help to grow and so we can continue to offer you great webinars and other experiences um, to all our members. Remember that we welcome non-members to attend our webinars and try us out as a guest. To register for upcoming webinars, please visit our Ottawa branch website. We'll make sure uh, to include our website address in the follow-up email. And on that, I just wanted to talk to you, just let you know about some exciting webinars coming up. So we've got um, a webinar on November 2nd uh, titled Weathering Stock Market Volatility and Other Financial Challenges Ahead. And that's presented by uh, Rob Carrick from the Globe and Mail. Uh, so keep an eye for that. And also, Sarah, you'll be, uh, you'll be uh, uh, doing another webinar 
with us on October 27th, talking about fall prevention. Uh, so again, to register to this webinar and any other of our upcoming fall webinar, please come see uh, our website and uh, the follow-up email will provide you with all that information. So again, thank you to all our participating members. Sarah, thank you so much. And our webinars gods. So Antoine Bayarjon and Linda Barber, thank you so much again for us. Uh, helping us with uh, making these webinars happen. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Au revoir. À la prochaine.